Hello, self-love. Now, self-love is a foundation of healing and transformation. It's a foundational necessity for us to be able to move forward and grow. Why? Well, we need to remember that the creator, the divine creator of all that is, created us in their image. We are a spark of the divine. We are a child of God. And we need to really grasp that to understand why we should love ourselves just as much as the divine loves us. And then, of course, this is reflected in all of our external relationships. I've talked about this. So often I find that one of the core things missing in a lot of my clients' lives is this foundation, self-love. And I had the same thing growing up myself. I think a lot of us can relate to this. Now, where does self-love come from? Self-love is a belief of our value, of our worth. That's what self-love is. It's an understanding, a core belief of who we are and our value in the world. And so where do beliefs come from? Well, uh, we all are installed with a set of beliefs when we're children. Through our environment, through our caregivers, we are given a set of lens perception to see the world through. And that might be empowering or disempowering. It depends on what you were given. And so when we have a lack of self-love, you can be sure that it was probably something that was taught to you when you were a child. There are many reasons we were taught um, why we, not to value ourselves. You know, we might have seen that demonstrated through our parents. Um, you know, our, our mother might have put herself last all the time. Our father might have drank his sorrows away. Um, there's many, many, many environmental uh, reasons, uh, nurturing reasons why we took on that belief that we weren't valuable. We might have had to prove ourselves all the time to show that we were worthy of any attention or, um, you know, any kind of um, love pouring over us. It might have had to be something we had to prove all the time. And so we learned we're not worthy of just being. We have to do something. And there's specific criteria. And this is conditional love. And I've talked about that. So I'm going to talk about a way we can find a new belief system around self-love. And this is a wonderful technique that I learned in NLP, and it's called reframing. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of reframing, but I'm going to get into the specific procedure that we can go through to reframe and challenge a belief and change it. See, once you actually look into a belief, like really look at your belief, you'll find that it's a mass distortion generalization of the truth. This is the thing. We've never consciously looked at our beliefs, but the moment we shed light on them, they cannot be the same. They are transformed by our conscious awareness. So this is a conscious awareness exercise with our beliefs around self-love. That's called reframing. So we're going to get right into it. So step one, ask yourself, what is the benefit of this belief? So let's imagine we have looked at the belief that I am unlovable. Now, this is very common belief. This is something that I found in a lot of people in my classes, uh, with clients, and with myself. I had the same experience. And we don't realize we're telling ourselves that I, we are unlovable all the time through the way we treat ourselves and the actions we take. So let's challenge that. So step one, what is the benefit of this belief of being unlovable? See, everything is dual. We're in a dual reality. There is black and white, light and dark. What is the benefit? What is the equal and opposite um, benefit of being unlovable? Well, in this case, I think perhaps that I have an opportunity to learn how to love. Perhaps that's the benefit right now. Can't find any others right now. So the only benefit I can think of is that right at this point in time, I actually have an opportunity to learn how to love myself. And that's quite positive. So that's a benefit. Okay. So step two. We're going to flip that belief over and find the equal and opposite belief. So what is the belief? I am unlovable. What's the opposite? I am always lovable. Well, that feels differently, doesn't it? Step three, we're going to ask for the specific evidence that this belief is true. Will it hold up in court? So let's imagine that we're, we're filing and researching and gathering all the evidence so that we can make a case and prove whether this belief is true, that I am unlovable. 
And this is the part that we find that just shedding light on this, it crumbles. It is a flaky belief, mass generalization. So let's have a look at some of the evidence here. So, hmm, no one actually told me that they don't love me. Oh, perhaps I'm exaggerating. There's one set of evidence. Another one is that, well, love is sometimes demonstrated through gestures. It's not always spoken verbally. A lot of us, um, we do it through acts of service and kindness. And hmm, perhaps I need to reevaluate how people have shown their love to me. It's a really good point. Okay, so I've just got two uh, points of evidence here today to prove that perhaps love, um, uh, perhaps I am lovable. Okay. And then specific evidence shows that my mum loves me and so does my brother. If I'm to look at the way they treat me, actually, they have always been there. They just don't, they just don't tell me. Hmm. Perhaps that I need to question this even further. So we've got three specific evidence points here now that kind of proves that the statement that I am unlovable may not stick. Okay, so the final step of our reframing process is this. We're going to form a new affirmative belief based on all of the research and evidence we just gathered. Okay, so in this case, my new belief is this. I am loved by many, both overtly and covertly. Hmm. And there is room for me to learn how to be even more lovable and how to love myself. There you go. That's a new aff affirmation that you can now write down and post everywhere and remind yourself and you will, will have changed your neural wiring. And this is the really cool part of this, okay? So when we challenge our beliefs, they can no longer stick. We've shed light on them. They are transformed by the power of observation and challenge. And now our wiring changes. So if, if you try and do this problem again, let's say that you go Something happens in your life and you go to say to yourself, oh, man, no one loves me. You know you won't be able to because you've already gone through and reframed and challenged this very belief system. You know it doesn't stick. So you can never feel the same way about this belief. Your lens of perception is beginning to shift and change for the good to create more empowerment in your life. So very simple process. Uh, I think that everyone should learn how to reframe. It's really helpful in my practice and in my own life. So I hope this has been um, informative and that you really do learn to challenge the current set of beliefs you have around self-love. It's not just I am unlovable. It could be, you know, I don't deserve this or no one likes me or this, you know, I always get, you know, the short straw or, what's wrong with me or, you know, these are mass generalizations. We can absolutely pull apart and challenge as being untrue and you will change your wiring. So have a beautiful day. See ya.